Hi, I'm Chris Mickish, a one -a missionary out of Maryland. And with me again is Steve Price, family pastor at Halethorpe Community Church. And today we're on 2.2. We want to talk about temptation. And uh, so what's, where do we go with this? What do you want to do to uh, start off this discussion? Well, you know, we all have different temptations. For some of us, it's watching the TV a lot. Some of us, it might be this. You know, where you say, you know, mom, dad, five more minutes, five more minutes, and five minutes turns into... Two hours. Yeah, right. Easily. Now, my personal temptation, my favorite food are cheesesteaks. I love cheesesteaks. People swear I'm actually from Philly, but I'm not. I am born and bred in Baltimore, <laughs> but I love cheesesteaks. And one of the things that's been going on recently in our last couple months since the coronavirus started, my favorite restaurant has been closed... Because uh -huh. they're remodeling. And they have the best cheesesteak in town. And I have been... It's its really been tempting me. Because I have been going on the great cheesesteak quest of 2020 to find one remotely as good. Hasn't happened yet. For me, it's french fries. French fries are good. But you can't have french fries without the cheesesteak. <laughs> And that has been something that has been tempting me because I want to find another good one. You know something I will tell you. Now, French fries or chips with a cheese stick? Fries. Um, I, I like fries. I like chips. Good old Utz potato right. chips. <laughs> See, there's temptations to get yeah, the chips we, too. We got off on the tangent, didn't we? No, I mean, it's cheese steaks. So. All right, I'll let you have it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we need to talk about temptation in the biblical sense we all have our little vices, and that's not really it at the moment. But uh, I recall one time when I was back in school, and there was some, some subjects that I just really wasn't confident on or where I didn't have the time to do all the studying that was appropriate. And uh, so I made myself a little cheat sheet. Uh, let's face it, folks, everybody's done it. And uh, you try to write it on your arm. All the teachers know all the ways to cheat. And sure enough, the day of the test came, I got caught. So the question really begs itself, is the cheating the sin? Yes. But the thinking about it, was that temptation, was that the sin? Well, no, you see, temptation, it becomes a sin when you give in to mm -hmm. it. Because yeah. the thing about temptation is, it appears really good at first. It appears really friendly fast solution to the problem. And then the bottom drops out. Yeah. You get caught. You cause someone else to stumble, which is a really big problem. Mm. You cause yourself to stumble. You know, in maybe in your friendships, you cause that best friend to stumble. Yeah. And that's when it gets in trouble. And see, the, tempt, the tempting to lie is also present because... One of the things, I don't know if you've ever heard this about lying, but when you tell a lie, you have to tell a lie to get out of that lie. Oh, yeah, I've to done tell that. tell a lie to get out of that lie. And then the problem is you've told so many lies, you don't even remember where you started in the first place. Yep. Just so, tell the truth, and that way you don't have to lie. And what a great person to look at in Scripture where temptation surrounded her was Eve. Uh, temptation just absolutely surrounded her. We're going to look at three verses all in Genesis chapter 3. They're all right next door to each other, actually. Verses 3, 4, and 5. Okay. So the first thing about Eve is Satan tempted Eve by questioning God's words. Really started off heavy there. Went right after God's words. Yeah. This is in, this is in the beginning, so verses 1 through 3. But we're going to look at mainly verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Okay. So there's this temptation right out of the gate. Hmm. So he has tempted Eve with God's words. Moving into part number two, he tempted Eve by questioning God's rightness. If you look at verse four, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall surely not die. Yeah, but if she's uneducated to that aspect, she's going to fall into, whoops, that temptation and sin. Exactly, because 
if we look back at what we talked about in 2.1, the adversary, yeah. the attacks when you're alone, when you're vulnerable. And that brings us to the final thing. So you had e Satan tempted Eve by questioning God's words. Satan tempted Eve by questioning God's rightness. And Satan tempted Eve by questioning God's goodness. Verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat and thereof, then your eye shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He makes this promise to her. You're going to be a god. Yeah, but you're you're, be... that's building your own personal pride. And that's exactly what he wants to do. Yeah. Oh, he wants man. you to be so inflated with yourself, so, you know, that you can't do any wrong. And that's where Satan's conversation really proves that his conversation is sick. It is twisted. And maybe there is an area in your life where temptation kind of rears its ugly head a little more than others. Something that I found really helpful was I actually took an index card. You can do an index card. You can use a sticky note, whichever one you want to. Mm -hmm. And you write down on it something that tempts you. Maybe it's video games. Maybe it's a certain television show. Maybe it's cheesesteaks. Maybe it could be cheesesteaks or cheeseburgers, you know. Mm, okay. And you write it on here. And you stick it somewhere you're going to see it every day. Whether it's on your laptop screen when you log in for school, if you're going to be virtual school this year. On your mirror in your bedroom or in your bathroom or somewhere where you're going to see it. And when you see it, allow that time to pray. And just ask God to help you. With that temptation. How long do you have to pray? You pray as long as you need to feel as if you are talking to God. It can be five seconds. It can be five minutes. It's between you and God. Only you know what's going on in your head and that you can talk to God about that. And God will give you that strength. But the thing is, it requires work on your part too. Okay. There is part where you have to also make that conscious choice. I'm not going to give in to that today. I'm not going to do it. You're tougher than that. You are. You can do it. All right. Thank you. Another great lesson. Absolutely. And we hope to see you again very soon. Thank you.